Marin loved the sea. She loved the sound of the waves calling to her through her window. She dreamt every night of the mysteries that lay beneath. Her father was a fisherman. Each day he went out to sea, and each night Merrin waited at the rocky cliff edge, holding up a candle to guide him safely home. The two of them were poor. Their roof was leaky, and they sometimes went hungry. But as long as they had each other, Merrin knew they would be okay. At night, her father sang her songs about his great adventures. He sang of giant leviathan serpents, haunted caves, and a lost city of gold beneath the sea. Merrin knew the stories weren't real, but she loved to listen to them. She drifted off to sleep, imagining the wonders of the world below. And her life continued that way, simply and happily. Until one night, her father didn't return. Marin held up her candle at the cliff's edge all through the night, staring out at the empty sea. She shivered in the cold wind as she watched for him all the next day. Her eyes welled with tears as night fell again and there was still no sign of her father. At last, she collapsed into sleep. In her dreams, she saw him, trapped deep beneath the sea, calling to her for help. She awoke with a jolt. A desperate and dangerous plan was already forming in her head. She took scraps of metal and wood her father had caught in his nets and pieced them together. She hammered and bolted, she measured and sawed. And before the sun had set, she had built a tiny, rickety submarine. With trembling hands, she squeezed inside and dove down beneath the waves to search for her father. The world beneath the waves shimmered with mystery. Glow kelp bulbs lit up around her as she passed by. Erin spotted some odd looking old coins. Maybe her father would know where they were from. flickered and danced on the sea floor, like an underwater fire. Her father once told her about a mysterious, living energy called time. 
Could that have been a Tyne wellspring? A seahorse made of clockwork gears darted out of the way as Marin approached. She wondered who could have built such a curious creature. Marin approached a glowing scrap of metal and pulled it inside. It was claw-shaped and had a strong magnetic pull. She took out her tools and attached it to a firing mechanism on her steering column. As if recovering from a bad dream. For a moment, she thought she had experienced her own death, but it had merely been the Tyne showing her one of the many possible roads ahead. Marin spotted shock nettles ahead of her. She had to be cautious, as the hostile creatures would attack her on sight. spotted shock nettles ahead of her. She had to be cautious, as the hostile creatures would attack her on sight. Guardian blocked Merrin's path. She
she knew it all too well from her father's stories. And she knew it must never be woken. According to her father, the Guardians had been built by ancient undersea explorers, called the Fomori. Marin always thought the Fomori were a myth. Now she wondered if her father's other stories might be true. Twisted forms of sunken ships stretched out in the distance. Was her father's boat somewhere among them? <laughs> 